go ahead and pick this guy back in there. Wait, didn't have a washer for him also. Or did we? Yeah, we did. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's already up here for this guy. We've got a lug nut here for him. Let's go put his aluminum part counterpart back in. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to show you what I did with the handlebars. Um, I pre-drill it the hole, um, but unfortunately, I didn't take into account the clearance of the brake lever. Uh, actually, the brakes and um, the housing to make it close. So more than likely, we might not be able to get to where we can see the brake uh, indication due to the housing, the way they kind of molded it. Um, we'll try to push back we can, but I don't think we can do much about it until we actually uh, get that squared away. So let me go and put this back in here. So no foul play. All right, and then we'll go ahead and pre-install this guy here. And when we're ready, we'll bring the very top connection rod first. And then once this is ready to swing over, we can swing over to close it. I know it will let us close it. Okay, so again, going back to this one, tilt it perfectly. Cool. So that's there. Really well made sign. So we're going to be able to actually lift from the very top and screw it in. <clears throat> so that's what we'll do for this guy. And then we'll do the other one as well. So let me go ahead and get that one. Should preset the other one as well, but I could preset it now. That way, when I do align it, I'll know how much slack I'll have. So this is going to come afterwards, interlock from the back first. Okay, there we go. Same thing with this one. Get it to a perfectly position. square here okay, let's see. hate to use this as leverage but let me see if I can use this to turn it a little bit more I want to make sure I screw it all the way in though so I want to really align this straight. You can see here, it's just off by a little bit right here. See that? And for me, that kind of I kind of like things straight. So I'm going to try and twist this in here. I'm going to use this sort of like a leverage handle. I'm not sure if I should do this, but I'm going to be really careful. Okay. Yeah, it's not going anymore, so I'm not going to force it. All right, so that's good enough. I mean, so that's died in there. That locks into place. Still gives enough room to straighten things out or anything like that. Oh, this is interesting. Look, almost actually reached. Almost, I said. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Oh, I'll be down. This side actually has no problem at all reaching. Uh, from a little bit, from a little bit point of view, I still look like I have to force the thread in like this or something, and then drive it. Huh. Yeah, almost. Unfortunately, maybe this is just a little bit higher or shorter, I can't tell. Yeah, this one definitely needs a lot more. Well, how can it when it doesn't have any slack on the very top? So let me see what I can do here. This guy's making me believe I might not have to take that off. Let's see again. Uh, 
that's why we can appreciate engineers for what they do. They calculate everything. So let me go ahead and try to put this all the way to the very top. Look, this guy didn't even have to go all the way to the very top, and he's still almost flushed. <clears throat> he's, he's flushed more from the bottom first. Maybe we open the idea. So we'll put this on the bottom. But I'm not sure why, but maybe. Let me see. Hello. You're picking up mail this early? Great. I usually they come around later in the evening. Yeah, this guy's gonna be the same situation. We're gonna we go from top to bottom. I guess that maybe it's just a certain amount. Um, you know, it's driven. So I'm surprised. Oh well, we got it though. So, oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna put a mark on it. All right. So we can leave this on the top or we can leave this on the bottom. Doesn't really matter. So we can leave this here. Leave on the very top. I prefer on the very top. So let me put this one back. And we'll get started on, we should show you what I do in the front there. Guy back up here. Give him a little slack to prepare him for insertion. All right, and then we can always move this back and up and down once we get it in position. This will probably be hidden from the tail light and everything else, so that wouldn't be a problem there. Um, <clears throat> think of now it's just getting everything squared in so yeah we got this bolted so that's ready to go once we put the cover on there we can pre-drill the hole to have it loops too so this can actually stay up and support our give you tail light I was gonna originally you know drill a hole right here and bolt it on here but I figured you know what since there's already a stud here I can just use the same existing one It'd be easier this probably would be stronger though you know, you more than likely could probably even sit on it if that was the case. You can see all these other ones are holding it. That's the one that's holding the seat cover right there. See that right there? That's quite a bit of a bolt. Yep. So let's go ahead and focus now on getting... Oh, you can see what I did here. I cut some bubble wrap and I stuffed it in here. The reason why was we pre-drilled the hole assuming that, you know, a millimeter won't go too off, but it actually did. So... Sorry, poor lighting. Let me see if I can get a light on that one. So what I did was I sh kind of planning to actually cover it up. Uh, not only that, but repair that little broken piece here with JB Weld. You can see here, this little guy, little tooth is almost falling off, but it's still stationed in there, so it's fine. We'll leave them. We'll leave them intact because they'll help us hold the where position we need to. We'll put a whole bunch of JB Weld glop right here. You know, sort of his waistline, all of all of it around, even the whole anchoring point. And then we're going to cover up these pre-drill holes here. You can see here I pre-drilled one. This is the original one right here, and I can see why it was actually almost loose because I believe the holes. I don't think it extended it, but I think it kept on eating the, the aluminum on this here, little by little, and it made this smaller. So when it made it smaller, the one that we drill was perfectly small. We use this drill bit here, by the way. We need to know what drill bit size will fit those standard on. Um, there it goes. 
732 an inch. This is perfect. And then it doesn't seem like it goes in, but you just tap it in a little bit, it'll force it in there. So it's nice and snug and when, when you use this drill bit here. We use a center punch hole here with a spring. So much easier. You, this will probably take you pre-drilling and everything less than probably a couple minutes. All you do is maybe make several uh, center punches, go ch -ch -ch. I'll show you how once actually the JB weld uh, settles in. But for right now, let's go ahead and patch this uh, existing hole and the new hole that we made underneath it, just like almost a millimeter, not even a millimeter, maybe a millimeter below it. We're gonna patch it all up. And then we're gonna actually, cause we really don't need JB Weld to actually, you know, and hold the hole in force. We just need to make sure that, you know, that little aluminum mouth doesn't get into the other hole. So it needs to perfectly round. So we're just using JB Weld sort of a, a round mold structure to make sure this tooth doesn't squeeze into the nether hole. Because what we're going to do is actually, once we cover both these holes up, we're going to pre-drill another one right in the middle of it. So we're just needing JB Weld to fill in the gaps for us, that's it. And from there, when JBL's hardened, I always use the Cure Long Time one because that will be the best bond. I can use the four to six hours one, which I always leave over. 48 hours anyway. I don't plan to work on it until another 24 hours minimum. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's mix them up. We'll use some of the empty containers. We'll need a little spoon. We can use this tie strap, thick one here. Just cut a piece of it off. That way you can work with it. So, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I guess we don't need that chrome washer after all. I mean, it wouldn't look bad though. You know, put the chrome one instead. But we wouldn't be able to actually lug nut it down tight. So I guess the chrome one is optional. I'll leave this one alone for right now. Get the other chrome piece. We'll use this as empty container to fill in our JB well. And again, we're gonna need a spoon to mix it all in. If you guys ever messed with JB well before. Sort of like a, what do they call it? Liquid soldering, not liquid solder, liquid welding. Normally you can weld almost steel with JB well. Go ahead and pre-mix this, get it ready to apply. We just need very little on this application. So, there we go. Set the camera here. Okay. So this stuff we need here, put this back here. Called a spacer, steel spacer, chrome plated, pretty cool looking. Very expensive too, by the way. I think these two are like almost close to two fifty, but three dollars. Okay, so now we're gonna need a piece of this guy here. Okay, if we want to be able to use something to stir it all up, you gotta mix those two compounds together. You can see the black and the red compound. There we go. Snap a little piece right there. Look, something hard plastic and you want to clean your surface I cleaned the surface uh, earlier I also sand it down you want to get to bare metal as possible and then clean all the debris and dust off so let's go ahead and apply some of this great compound here from JB Weld okay so you can use the back of it we're going to use this clean container here to mix our JB well. You can use the inside here if you want to, or you can use on the outside, doesn't matter, it doesn't really take that much space, especially with applying a small dab. So I'm just going to use the outside here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply this dab. Poke it. There we go, it's poked. And you can reuse this too, by the way, you're not going to use the whole thing. And you just want to do a half a half of each. There you go. You can pre-mix them in like this if you want to. See, I got the black one and I got the red one. Just enough to cover it. Actually, that's even more than enough. Okay, you don't want it to touch each other, by the way. Yeah, that's more than enough I need. Still want to come out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're going to keep them, keep them separate, please. Don't mix the two together inside the tube, white with white. 
Yeah, close it right back right away. Excellent. There you go. Then we're going to mix this right here. It gives you almost less than probably, I say about maybe 30 minutes tops to play around with it before it starts hardening. Yeah, you want to get to like a gray color. Okay, we're done. That's all mixed here. Oh, it smells. Not too bad. Doesn't have really much of a, you can see why we use a disposable a little clean containers carton there. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go work on uh, not so much our hole yet. We're gonna work on our that cover there that has the problem. So let's bring this here and try to position this where you guys can see what I'm doing as well. There we go. I'll put this in here. Careful not to touch my seat. This thing is gunky. comfortable because you're going to be playing around with like molding a play-doh and then you want to set this somewhere where it's steel I mean no standing steel not steel steel okay so I got a little bit of this right here a little too much there actually I don't want to drip anywhere okay I'm gonna go and ply you can see here so I get some lighting for you okay so you can see that See all the crut area? You want to actually get it where you can actually almost open it up for initially. I want to open that little tooth up a little bit. Open that cavity up. And you want to get into that cavity as much as you can without breaking it, of course. So you can see here I'm forcing it in there. This is a really easy JB Weld job. Because this area here, it doesn't really matter. It has plenty of actually slack room but this one if you if you mess up you can always sand it down to jb weld so it's not like it's permanently steel or something you can sand it with some sandpaper okay then i want to get into that little crut here too that crut is no can do there you go and i want to uh, just want to make sure you pack it in there now you don't just like soldering you want to make sure it gets into the into the crack you can see i'm forcing it And you could do a pretty job once you get all that filled into the crack afterwards. So you can see there, my JB Weld job there, not too shabby. Sorry, lighten up for you. Wish I had better lighting for you. It's got gray on gray. But yeah, it, it'll build. You'll definitely get it to build. There we go. Okay, it's starting to get hardened now, or whatever it's doing. You want to layer a little thicker in the areas that are vulnerable. That way you know you're building up sort of like it's clay. So you can see I'm trying to build up that corner here. Trying to create like almost like a hillside. Or a ramp. Because I want it just to, when it hardens, I want it to harden right in that area. Okay, then you want to make sure you scrape off the areas that you need to make sure it's clear or sorry my hands in the way the whole time I hope it wasn't there we go so this one's almost ready you can see I'm still going over and trying to fine-tune it I'm still working with the same piece of JB weld putty not getting going back for seconds or anything yet 
probably won't need to this should be enough for this piece here okay I'm gonna give this the shape it needs I need to make sure it's gonna go in my hole slot because if it's covered with JB weld then it's not gonna go in you're gonna have another trouble so it's, I'm moving the same putty around scraping it from where it doesn't need to be thick to where it needs to be thick looking good eventually I'll feel comfortable I'll let it slide on its own and then when you think you got perfect I know you want to touch it some more and make it even more perfect just try to settle sometimes uh, because you'll end up actually creating a lot more work for yourself. So I'm just focusing on filling in the crut. Focusing on filling all that. That little crack area. Again, this was pre-sand a little bit. I didn't get, I wasn't able to get into the sand part of the crack area, but it's pre-sand as far as I know of the areas that I need to be. Okay. I got to worry about scraping this little round part off because that's the part where it's going to go wherever you're okay that looks good it looks like enough here on the cavity to support his body and it's not going to go further past this half circle anyway so anything else thicker here it doesn't matter Once, once it gets hard, it's going to be hard to work with. So you can see here I'm working it. Just like a surgeon, huh? Timing is everything. You got the patient's heartbeat on your hands. The same thing with this is going to dry. You do it too long. Take too much time trying to be perfect. And I try to be, try to scrape everything else off. Yeah, it takes a little bit of patience and you might want to get yourself in a position a little bit more comfy. Like I said, again, you're going to be molding this putty around. Okay, now it's time for me to scrape back off again. Right, there we go. Sorry, you can't pray. There's a lot of love going on in the scooter here. I mean, this part right here, I can probably replace for $10. But yet, I'm taking this much time and dedication to fix it because I don't want to wait for one thing. All right, so this is it. We're leaving it alone. This is good. And then you can actually take your finger. JB Wall is not going to really kill your finger. And you can just kind of wipe off forcefully. You know, you can wipe your fingers right away back, wash it. That's how I do it.